All right. Well, hopefully it's not lagging too much. We got a the stream is up. All right. Right now we're going to look at Okay, special edition today, special request from user on Reddit, and he was interested in interactive comics. That's right, so fellas looking into, well, building an interactive comic, and myself having had dabbled with the idea in the past, um, got interested in his idea. Um, he outlined a little bit what his expectations were. So user swipes and taps the screen to move next panel. Uh, that's a feature uh, to actually tap just the um, a, an image inside. Oh, that's a feature that's more available to the um, Action Director full version. So, but we can use a button. And previous panel fades as it gets further away from the center of the screen which sounds possible sounds easy enough as comic panel gets towards the center of the screen it brightens so yeah that's sort of like a fade in for the next panel uh, when the comic panel so this is an incomplete sentence in the in the source uh, but I imagine it centers and, and becomes, becomes locked yeah, camera is locked until the panel is finished animating. So I think there was an idea of having some uh, some animations inside the panel, or wait, or perhaps he means the um, the uh, actual panel stopping in front of the camera. Most of the comic panels have text dialogue that types out with a letter typing animation. Okay, that's not possible currently with Action Director. Some panels even have animation, sprite image sequence uh, that plays upon activation. And this is possible inside the full version, but not inside the like version, which is what I'm demoing right now. Repeat for next panel. So what we're going to work on right now is something similar to a carousel view that we see. So if we swipe a panel, uh, a new one pops in. Um, and but because we're not doing any any kind of uh, swipe actions, um, we'll use the the mouse click. And what we can do is we can use the uh, yeah that's that's probably the best way. Uh, in the full version, there is a a component that allows you to have a stack and be able to roll through that stack uh, forwards and backwards. But uh, with the light version, we have to do something a little bit um, simpler. Um, all right, so let's get started. First thing, I went ahead and um, got these old panels out from an idea that I tossed around for a little bit for an interactive comic. Uh, originally, this was going to give the player an option. Uh, two characters are standing in front of a door, and they they have to decide whether they want to blow it up or try to hack it. Uh, in this case, we're just going down one option. We're just going to see these these four panels display one after another, and and in fact. Let's just start by focusing on, on getting from one panel to the next. So let's start with that full panel center stage. And what we want to do is just create the event that he wanted. We'll have a button, uh, perhaps over here, we can put it at the, the bottom. Uh, once it's tapped, this image will slide out and fade away. And we want to be a, a little bit, uh, this concept of it going further into the background while another one comes in. So very much like a carousel that we see in um, different kinds of applications like we used to see in iTunes or Netflix. 
So the first thing is I want to create, uh, start creating some actions. Um, we can worry about the, the interactions after. Uh, first we just want to trigger that, that first movement. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and create a game object, empty game object, in which we're going to put most of the actions. We'll just call this actions. And go ahead and create a child. And, and this first set will say, and since we probably are going to replicate them, let's use something generic. So this will probably be the uh, slide out. So we'll keep reusing that for any panel that we want to slide out. And so what do we want when we uh, when we begin? So as you know, the action director uh, is embedded right into the component draft analyst. Go ahead and find your action director and first thing we want to do is add a run. So uh, action director needs to be able to, to, to call the, the action components using the run. So first step is always setting up the run. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sliding that panel away. We're going to be fading it away as well. Um, so there's two things. There's a, there's a movement, and with and we could add a scale, but we might not need to do that just yet. We'll see how the camera reacts, because right now the the sprite is actually set. Uh, the background is, is is quite a bit further than where the sprite is, so we, we can see perhaps it'll perhaps it'll show up. So let's try to see that. So we'll have a fork meaning we'll have an, an action that, um, or two actions rather, that play in parallel. One of them being the movement, which is a transform. So I move to a certain spot. And the other being the fade, which is a color, an effect of the, uh, the, the color. So fade out. Uh, what or do we want to affect? Well, we want to affect panel zero. So we're going to drag that in. And of course, we need to bring these components into the fork. The fork has to call something. It calls these events. And the fork has to be able to run. And since we're just going to, we just want it to happen on play, we'll just click start on enable so now if we hit play right now one there's going to be no change because we haven't input any uh, any data here in the, 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 the parameters that are open and we also have no duration it doesn't happen over any amount of time I'm going to put something quite slow so we just see maybe three seconds is enough so over three seconds we'll know uh, that something is happening um, now, where do we want to move it to? Um, sometimes if you know already the, the defined area that you, you want to move it to, you can get those uh, that point. Another way to do it though is by setting a point manually and then changing that move to to a move to object. Um, so here I have a, a node that I created earlier, and it's set to zero. But so here it is, and I'm just going to go ahead and place it. Let's just say we'll place it to where we think we want it. We want it, that panel to come off screen progressively. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it off screen, and but keep it at the the zero axis. back to my actions so yeah just change this because we're changing the way we are going to do it so just remove this one and add a move to object so go back it's a transform 
And so rather than move by or move to, uh, we want to move to object. And in this case, so the panel I want to move is the transform object, and the transform to reach is this one here. So which is going to be this, uh, well, and, and instead of calling it top quarter node, let's call it off or screen left. Right screen. It'll be easier to see later once I have the right screen. screen right. And it's at the same z axis. So, and my background is set to the 20. And so, so the higher the number, the further back and the way this one is set up. So here you see there's, there's my background and there's the, so the logo is where, where the panel sits. And you see there's my node over here, so we can move it back over here. We'll just see how the camera ends. Let's move that node to, let's say, to 19, huh? Just before that background. All right. Now, actually, yeah, I just want to see that node. Probably though I'll have to apply a scale, but we can take a look at that later. So, because we deleted it, the the, the other uh, move, it's missing from the stack. So now we just put it back over here. Move to object. Put it three. And so the object to reach is the node on the left side of the screen. So let's take a look and see what happens. So there we go. It's moving. It's fading but it's not really scaling out. Uh, that's to be expected. It's probably not that much depth there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add third component. And it's transform. We want to scale. And we're not going to scale necessarily to that object. Maybe we can, we can scale by uh, Actually, yeah, we'll scale to a certain percentage. All our panels are the same size, so it's good. Mm, no, actually, no, it's true. Some of them, see, some of these panels, this one's set to x22, 221, 235. So the drawings were all different sizes. So rather than that, rather than scale to, which are always going to, it's going to have the same, uh, or won't have the same kind of effect on each panel. Uh, because of percentages, uh, even if I set a percentage, it'll, it'll affect it differently because of the, 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 the native size of it. So instead, we'll scale by. So I'll move this one. Scale by. Now that that's going to keep those panels consistent. And since we're shrinking it down, one being a hundred percent, let's shrink it down by, well. 25%, so bring that down to a quarter. And I'm not impacting over here. Sometimes we need to set this to one, but we'll see how that goes. So, and so I added a third, and you'll notice that fade out is there two times, and that's that's really because. Um, once you extend it, it takes the last one and, and, and duplicates it. So, just we'll clean it up. We'll note it. So, fade out, move to object, and scale by. So, now we know that it's going to call all three of those actions in parallel. We set it to three seconds. Um, there's one more parameter that's adjustable over here, and that's the eases. And we can take a look at that right after. Let's just confirm that this is working the way we want it to. So it's moving. And it's still not scaling enough. Oh, look at that. <coughs> it's because we didn't define a panel. We just defined the panel. And let's see. Let's 
possible that, yeah, that zero is actually the 100% in this case. So take a minus 25. We'll do it. There we go. Mm, is it too big? Minus 50. Not maximize on play. Let's just see what we can do. Yeah, and you know, to give it a little bit of a feeling, maybe on that move to kind of should we ease it in, ease it out. Probably ease out, make it go slower as it's moving away. No, I didn't like that pop. That's not so nice. We'll ease it on both. That's good. Perhaps these are best if they're aligned. So let's try that. Ease out, ease out. Still have a pop. It's too much. Um, what we can do is well, we can even define a custom curve for it. We'll leave this one to, to none, and we'll just impact this one. We want it to slow down just a bit. And slow down just a bit at the end too. Take a look at that. Well, that's good. So right now we've set the slide out event. We set it just for one panel, but we can keep duplicating that for uh, for each panel that we want to have. All right. Now let's take a look at. Well, what about a, a move in? Right. We want the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and set, create a separate node all the way onto the other side at, at the same distance. So if this one is minus 10.8, the other one will be at 10.8. So I duplicate it. And it's going to be our screen right node. And there it is. Turn on our just for now. Turn off our old panel. And we'll want it to appear. Want to move to the center, right? Um, and we should always just think of all panels as by default being center. So what can happen when we start the action? is we can start these panels off screen but I like to know where they're going to end up I like to have that center screen um, and that's a simple thing that we can do we can just call an action that'll move it uh, in zero seconds and make it pop over here and then move in so duplicate this slide out. I'm going to call it slide in. Duplicate it. Why? Because it already has certain amounts of things that we're going to want. We're going to want to run. We're going to want um, the fork because several other components are going to be attached. And but we're also going to want an earlier event. can do is we can set a center node. Just 
duplicate that. And then that way when we move to object, we can move to the center screen. So basically what happens is the move to object, regardless of the size of the object, you'll see that the object has a, has a certain size. The When you call a move to, uh, it's the center point that, that, to get, that uh, will get matched. So if I were to move this square, the center point would match over here. Uh, if I'm moving this panel, the center point will, move, will match over here. So you can't see it because it's behind the panel, but I've created this center node over here. Actually, where is it? Why is it? Oh, it's on top. It hasn't moved. There we go. That's over there. So one of the events that we're going to do, so rather than do the sliding first, we're going to do this, duplicate it. And we're going to call this one set screen right. Or set right screen. Set right. Set right is enough. And so what I'm going to try to do is instantly make that panel uh, be over on the screen right. So which one is gets affected? In this case, panel one. Where is it going? It's going screen right. How much time do we want to take? We want it to happen instantly. And we also want it to be of that smaller size. So we keep that scale. What we don't need is this. Actually, we do need to fade out. We want it to be completely transparent. And it'll happen in zero seconds. So it'll happen instantly. Same thing for this. Now we're getting some more complex actions. So we're going to need to call these in, in a series. We're going to remove this from, set the start on enable to false. The same thing up here. And now for the slide in. So we know it's going to be over here. We want it to move to the center node. We want to call and it's panel 2 that we want to move. What else do we know? We're going to and we're going to scale and this time up by 50%. And so it's at 50%, we want it to scale up to 100. Set start on the new to false. So let's run this. Let's think about this whole sequence now. We're going to call all three of those things in a specific order. Um, so first is a run. We'll start off with that panel in the in, in the center screen, which is going to be panel panel zero. Let's click off panel one. Panel zero stop off in the center screen. Um, and we're going to, so since we're calling several things, what we need, we need a sequence. And so the sequence is different than fourth. The sequence will call things in series. It calls the events one after another. Um, we have three that we need to call but it's possible that some of these are in parallel. 
that's okay because we can inside a sequence we can also call a fork. So let's see. I want us to have a little bit of breathing room to kind of see that first panel. Uh, since we're not putting any inputs later on, we can change this. So, whoops. So what we need is for for the actions to sleep for just enough seconds. And that's a control, so we sleep. And let's just say we sleep for five seconds. And call that up here. Of course, the, the run has to be set to this sequence, too. And we want it to start on A-roll. So I'll start on A-roll. It's going to sleep for three seconds. Then what? the same time, we want it to instantly, we want this panel 1 to instantly kind of set itself up over here and just wait. Uh, so probably we need a fork. And two events. So we want it to sleep. And we want our panel zero to set the screen light. And then, so I'm going to move this fork up. I like to keep these kind of uh, moving from top to, to bottom. So over there, I'd previously put the sleeper one. I'm going to slide in and I'm going to put the, that fork in there. So what's the fork? It's calling my sleep, it's calling set light. So, and if, right now we can try to see how that's working. And what we can do is, we we'll want it to be active. We just want to see that it's that it's actually doing those things that we're calling uh, before we get too far. And instead of putting the fade out, well. We'll just give it just a little bit of time, just so we know that it's actually doing that. Huh? Let's give that a shot. Okay, let's see. Calling the fork. Set screen right. Yeah, it's calling the wrong panel. That's why that one was fading out. So we want ones in this side for set screen right, and for slide out we want panel zero. So now we'll see this panel is going to be over here. Yeah. One thing it didn't do, it didn't scale it to the right size. Yeah, it's probably the wrong panel. Still. Oh uh, yeah. I actually tapped the wrong one. Here we go. Screen right. Call panel one. So there it is. It's out over there. Now, if we set those to zero, it's over here. We don't see it, but that's where it is. So, what happens next? We want another fork. We want to call our screen, our slide in, that panel zero to slide in. So slide out. Panel zero. Set right. Slide in, panel zero. Just double check these. Uh, there we go. It's not calling the right one. Now we have that. This one either. There we go. So now we have 
for ensuring that it's calling all the right paths. Get back into that higher level action. We'll create another fork underneath to call those two those two events. We'll call them in, in parallel. We just copy and paste them. And what we're going to do, we want to call slide out and slide in. And just for the sake of organization, let's put center screen just above it. Oh. Let's see. Oh, no. We have to make sure too that we actually set the fork in here. So it calls the first fork and calls the second. Second action. Let's take a look. Probably did something wrong with our slide in. So it's supposed to move two. Could be at the level of the scale. There we go. When we duplicated that first event, we kept a fade out. In fact, what we need is a fade in. And that's a color. Fade in. Let's move it back up into this stack. Keep things nice and neat. What's fading in? Panel zero. How long is it taking? Taking three seconds. Where is it sitting? At the top of the fork. So three get the text, it's a rest of task. Our panel slides in, comes in. You'll notice my center node is there. And all we have to do is set the alpha to zero. It won't show up anymore. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, it's not an interactive comic yet. So, what we need to do is start adding some interactions. And let's start by, I'm just going to duplicate that button that we saw earlier. And I'm going to call it button next. And inside text will be next. Let's see what it looks like. A bit big for what we want, huh? Bring it down. Let's see. There we go. a little bit big, but I can make it a little bit more transparent. And just for this, 
we can remove some of the bells and whistles that we have. We won't need the, uh, the outline. Just won't need this globe here. That's it. Won't need the second piece of text here. Let's center this one. Then I'll need the overlay. Right now it's the gray, that's why you can't see it. See it. So and you see let's set this target graphic with this one up here. default white. Now we get the natural color and probably just going to make it slightly transparent black. Keep our text white. There we go. Yeah, my button's a bit tall and wide. That's better. Maybe 40. Yeah, that's good, eh? It's a bit darker. So, what are the actions for this button? Um, not really going to have any any idle. We don't need to to have it idle. All we want to know is what happens when it gets pressed. So it'll flash, um, and probably in the in the context of, of this. Now it'll have a highlight on it. Let's set that to something like this. Yeah, that's good. And it's going to call some actions. We need to call some actions. So what's what's it gonna call? Well it should call the slide out of panel two and slide in of panel one. Right? So we're just gonna set this up a little bit differently. So first thing is, we won't need this sleep anymore. Because the button anyways will, is the, the, the length of time we see the first panel. It's, well, it's user decided. User decides how long he wants to look at that panel. But on enable, we'll still want that first panel to be set. Uh, yeah, panel one to be set off screen. So 
So what happens on Vivo? Just set that panel off screen. So we'll remove all of this. And what are we calling? We're calling the set off screen. Because that's the only thing that we're doing at the start. Then we want to call these two. So we'll take our button. And we can actually set these over here. So we're going to start put these on enable. But actually, there's two ways to do this. I'll show you the sim. So I can actually drag in the set right here and find its functions we want it to run so action run action run same thing for the slide in action run action Take it to run don't need that second prop So now we have the first panel. Uh, there's zero panels over here. Panel one is hidden over here. If I hit it, the event should occur. Now, I totally messed up what we earlier what we had earlier. Should be two spheres. Now. Oh, that's why it's calling the same thing twice. Yeah. When I deleted it, I removed the top one. Okay, so let me start it. And there we go. So then the question would be, well, how do we make this repeatedly? In the light version, probably we'd have to set, kind of package these into uh, little bundles uh, and have panel 0 and panel 1 pairings, uh, panel 1, panel 2 pairings, and so on. And every button would also be kind of an individual button. So once I press it, this first button would actually disappear and call a new button down here in the tree. In the full version, there is another component that can actually uh, stack a bunch of events and we'll let you go through them um, come back and forth. So the full version might actually support this kind of um, interaction more deeply, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it in the light version. So that concludes this little demo of how to build an interactive comic or um, with Action Director. Hope you enjoyed that.